Hello, welcome to the next installment of A View into the Collection. My name is Amy and I'm going to share with you a variety of hand-sewn and handcrafted dolls made by Regina Alvarado de Cata. So Regina Alvarado de Cata is said to be of Mexican and Indian descent. Um, though not from one of the Pueblos, she did marry into the Pueblo of Okeowinge. She met and married Eulogio Cata at a young age, soon after she began attending school in a small northern New Mexico community called Chamita. Eventually, the couple lived and worked at the Santa Fe Indian School, where Eulogio worked as the school's dairyman and Regina in the sewing room. This is also where Regina was soon discovered to possess many artistic talents. And due to her recognized talents, she was eventually transferred to the San Juan Day School. And when there, she formed clubs for the young girls to teach them a variety of handicrafts. It is around this time that Regina began crafting the dolls, which we see here today. At first, she made the dolls for her own daughters so she could teach them stories of their Pueblo heritage. Regina already utilized this method of teaching children at the schools about their Pueblo history while perpetuating the skills necessary to make household articles and dance regalia. A highly creative and innovative woman, Regina took her skills as a seamstress, weaver, basket maker, and embroiderer and combined them all to piece together detailed and two-scale renditions of Pueblo dancers and prominent figures from the Pueblos. So each figure stands about a foot high. So each doll was sewn with a flesh-colored cotton cloth and stuffed with cotton batting. Each face was formed with blunt pointed scissors and the eyes, nose, lips, and ears were embroidered onto the cotton cloth, giving each its own unique personality. No detail was lost as even the individual hair strands are embroidered onto each head in its own style. For example, the Taos man's hair is parted down the middle with strands of embroidery thread used to make his braids. And the female figures are uh, given bangs with their hair either tied back, braided, or left hanging loose. As I shifted to focusing on some of the dolls, I want to note that Maureen Grammer donated this collection of Kata dolls to the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center in 1998. They were in her private collection since about the late 1930s to the early 1940s. It is written in the appraisal report that Maureen wanted these dolls created in order to document the clothing and dance regalia worn in either everyday wear or for specific dances. So on that note, I will begin with the pair of eagle dancers, which were crafted with a variety of materials. The appraisal report states that the eagle dancers are San Ildefonso Pueblo boys. Cotton batting was used to mimic the soft feathers of an eagle on the heads and chests with a small piece of wood carved and painted as the beak. Each wears a white leather kilt gathered at the waist with leather ties strung with small bells. An avanu or water serpent is painted on one kilt and a pair of snakes on the other. Tiny pieces of tin were cut and clasped to pieces of cut leather at the bottom of the kilts. These, as well as the bells, make a familiar jingle sound as the figure is moved. As an added piece, I thought I would share with you a painting by J.D. Medina of Zia Pueblo to show yet another interpretation of a pair of eagle dancers. In this painting, you get a sense of how the dancers swoop with their arms outstretched, soaring like an eagle. The buffalo dancer and buffalo maiden dancer display an enormous amount of detail as well. The male figure's button-up long sleeve shirt is hand sewn with white leather armbands painted with a single blue stripe and two dangles of strung glass beads. 
his cotton crocheted leggings, hand woven and embroidered kilt and white sash belt are each spectacularly crafted. The same can be said about the Buffalo Maiden's white dance manta. Though not easy to see, she also wears a red wool as well as a cotton dress underneath her, her manta. It is said that Kata used rooster spurs for buffalo horns, and that's evident on the Buffalo Maiden's headdress. Two Los Matashinas dancers from a dance drama seen here are analogous to the Matashinas danced at Okeowinge. Though not a Pueblo dance, the roots of this dance drama can be traced back to the Middle Ages in Europe. This dance has been adopted by many of the Pueblos and is typically danced during the Christmas season. The large male figure is called the Monanca and is the head dancer. The young girl is Malinche and for some cultures is a symbol of purity. No amount of detail is left out of these particular figures. The headdress on the male is called a cupil and is made with silk ribbon, velvet, and decorated with Christian symbols. He holds a rattle in one hand and a wood carved trident in the other. Malinche wears similar clothing as worn by young girls to their first Holy Communion. The elaborate dance regalia is captured skillfully by Regina, and a dancer in the Jemez Pueblo adaptation is seen here in a painting by Jose Ray Toledo. Two prominent figures are our final dolls of note. First is Regina Cata's husband, Eulogio Cata. Eulogio was a governor at the Pueblo of San Juan, which was known as San Juan and is now known as Okeowinge. He is depicted in his important role as a leader of his Pueblo. He holds a cane, which holds significant meaning as a symbol of his leadership. He wears his finest clothing. The other figure here is an Isleta Pueblo leader named Pablo Abeda. He wears the white cotton shirt with a red cotton undershirt, which peeks through the lace sewn at the chest. These are typical of the shirts worn even today at the Pueblo of Isleta. A governor himself, he also holds a Pueblo cane in his hand. The feathered headdress of both distinguished men signifies their importance. Well-known Jemez Pueblo historian, Joe Sando said of Pablo Abeda, quote, the grand old man of Isleta Pueblo was truly an important and great Pueblo leader, end quote. I enjoyed finding and reading about the outstanding life and work of Regina Alvarado de Cata. She captured the spirit of Pueblo traditions with her highly skilled craftsmanship and her ability to reach Pueblo youth and teach them not only how to sew, embroider, make pottery, weave textiles and baskets, she also perpetuated the age old Pueblo stories, beliefs and practices so vital to the survival of our Pueblo culture. According to a 1968 article in El Palacio magazine, Kata created quote, 1,441 dolls, each depicting in complete and unerring detail some facet of Indian life and lore, end quote. Also in this magazine article is a photo of Regina standing in front of a large culture stitched tapestry of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Kata dyed the wool and embroidered this life-sized piece as a means of prayer that her sons would return home safely after being drafted into World War II. It took her 11 years to finish this work, and as it turned out, not a single soldier from Okeowinge died in World War II. So thank you for joining me. I hope you found Regina Cotta's dolls and valuable work throughout her life as inspiring as I have. Join me next month for the next installment of A View into the Collection.